I don't own his rock It was all paid on somebody else's credit card who never pay it off. It secured on overvalued vacant property. Sell it to the Chinese. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about another Kijai rapper called Easy Animate. So we should be, you should have seen a demo video just before this. So let's dive in. So first of all, let's cover how you set this up. So you can drag the workflow into Comfy, but it may be that it doesn't actually come through. This one is experimental, so it's going to be changing and there's going to be future videos on this as it develops. Uh, but everything works at the time of posting, um, so I can't see why it would suddenly not work. But you do need a couple of models. Um, so you've got two options. Um, what you can do is you can get the code and then take the git clone, right? And then when you're inside Comfy, so we'll copy this, and then when you're inside Comfy and you go to Manager, you can do install git via URL. So just paste that there and do it that way. That's if you don't find it in the manager because it's such a new node. I don't think it is registered. It may install though. By the time you get to this, it may be that you just drag the workflow in and it will uh, find the easy animate wrapper and go ahead and install it for you. But you're going to need a couple of extra models. So as he mentions it here, you're going to need the BF16 pruned version of the Transformers model, which is these, these guys. Now, I took the 768 version because I just wanted to get a demo out quick, but I want to try the 960 version next. What I found was on a 4090, this is actually pretty good. Um, and I was starting to touch with, with, I think with 120 frame batches, I was starting to touch the memory limit. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind when you're thinking about how many frames you want to do. Consider chaining lots of 30s instead of doing 60 or 120 or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, anyway, we'll get to all that. So we're going to get this and this is going to go in the Transformers folder. I'll show you in a second. Now we're also going to need to get Easy Animate uh, Diffusers library. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these except for the Transformer folder because we'll basically be putting this model in the Transformer folder and this lot goes separate under Common. So I'll show you what that looks like. Right here, we've got my Easy Animate folder inside models. So Comfy UI models Easy Animate. And inside Transformer, as I said, we've just got Easy Animate 768. And inside Common, we've got all of these, which are taken from here. It's pretty much everything except for the Transformer folder. All right. So just going to run through it quickly for you guys. So we've got everything in here, the 1.6 gigabyte PyTorch model there. Um, another config in here, we've got two 4.4 and a 4.8 gigabyte model in there. And then we've got a 774 kilobyte model in here, which is kind of small, I guess. And then a one gigabyte VAE model. So you put all of that in your easy animate folder and you're good to go. And like I said, the loop motion pack uh, the old one used SD 1.5 and animate diff. And the new one, so it was doing this with relighting and QR code stuff, right? To regenerate where the dark areas and light areas are. Anyway, we did a big video on the loop motion with LoRa's and stuff. It's very cool. So in the new pack, what we've got is we've got a couple of setups. So what I've done is I've created, um, uh, uh, well, we'll take a look at them. Why not? So download this. You've got all the stuff set up. So now you can jump into Comfy. So let's take a look. So as you can see, I think it's just finished cooking, um, cooking a video for me now. So first thing to explain is the extras. So I put some extras in here. First thing is an image resize. This one takes it up to 1024 by 1024, but it's not doing any clever upscaling. It's literally just a blind, take it from 768 to 1024. So if anything, it's going to make it look a bit worse. 
Then we've got a choice of rife or film. Okay. And that's going to handle interpolation. So here we're playing back this at 15 frames per second. Here we're playing it back at 30 frames per second. And here we're playing it back at 60 frames per second. Now, what I'm doing here is quite a rough test. But I wanted to see if I put in drastically different images. You can see them at the bottom of the screen there. I'll just go over and have a look at the input side. So what we're doing is we're bringing in the image, cropping it to 768 by 768. Uh, same thing with all of these images, right? They're all being cropped to 768, uh, crop or fill. And I've put full instructions here with, as you can see, we've got the folder structure that you need. And then you've got instructions from me, all the links and uh, the features and everything else. Now, this one here is actually a, an attempt to take any image size in, okay? So I, what I'm doing here as well is I'm doing two things at once. One, I'm checking to see what happens when we make a drastic change. And two, I'm testing what happens when, um, when we do crop, okay? So uh, like I said, the next thing I wanted to do was put it on keep proportion and see if it will keep this proportion, right? Uh, and obviously I'll try putting it on all of them and see. But it probably won't work because it really wants to be 768 by 768. Anyway, because I could drive, I could take the width and height and drive it. But I know that if the images are like 4K, that's not really going to work. So I could leave a limiter on here. So it'll keep the aspect ratio, but the longest side will be 768, for example. But anyway, I don't want to get in the weeds. So here are the controls for the dim limiter, which is also an upscaler if you put the uh, number up. Uh, if you fiddle with the settings, we'll get over there in a minute. We're using the 768 model here in the uh, loader. It does actually download it, by the way. If you've got good internet, you don't need to do everything manually. You This will actually just download the models for you in the background. I just try to show people how to do things because often this will fail um, due to a timeout or whatever. So we have the seed control and the frame limit. So that's how many frames each section is going to actually uh, animate, right? And this is quite a complicated one. It's an A, B, C, D, A loop. So we animate A to B, then B to C, C to D, D to A, and then we put them all together to make A, B, C, D, A. So here's my prompt, which I haven't changed. <laughs> That's the prompt from the last one. So that's my bad. And that's probably why it is a bit weird. See, if I actually go in here and say, you know, uh, landscape of, uh, landscape of ain't, landscape of ancient architecture, tropical, snowy, hopeful, fish islands, and you know, maybe if I do that, maybe if I do that, it'll be a bit better. See. Well, this is the thing. I'm trying to uh, fit that prompt to all of those images. So obviously that's not, that's introducing a lot of chaos. Um, ideally, what you want to do is use images which are similar, and then it will like morph from one to the other in a nice way. Like I said, this is quite rough because I'm trying to do silly things. So let's take a look at some of the uh, workflows in the pack. So this one is obviously the AR version, which is experimental. It's not going to be in the pack because it's just a modified version of ABCDA, which is this one. And the main difference here, of course, is I've actually made the images be... Um, in fact, I better save those images and include them in the pack. And that way you can just hit the ground running um, by putting them in there. Now, it's interesting what, what's going on here. So after the actual prompt, it's going to take an image start and an image end into the Easy Animate sampler. Now, what I've done is I've had it re render that stage so that you get a preview of what that section looks like. And obviously, if there's a problem, then you can just stop it and make your tweaks. But it's going to animate from image one to image two. So we're going to call this A and this B, this C and this D. So what we're going to do for this first one is go from A to B. As you can see, 
that's going from A to B. And then for this one, we're going to go from B, uh, so for, yeah, from B to C. You look over here, it starts as the I and it ends as the cube, right? And then the next one, we're going to go from C to B. So this one is going to start as the cube. Oh, wait. Okay, this is actually the wrong preview. There is one which goes from... It's a shame I can't show that to you, but when I've reloaded the workflow, it's for some reason got the wrong preview there now. But basically, it would have gone to there. And then lastly, uh, we go from uh, D to A. So if you notice here, the image start goes into the start, but then the end is actually this one. Well, coming from the resize, obviously. You always take it from the resize to make sure everything matches. And I've put a preview here just to make sure you can see, you know, if you've done a crop or a stretch or whatever, make sure it's not skewed and you don't like how it looks. Okay. So now we've made all of our A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A. Obviously, all we have to do is put all of those batch, all of those image uh, sequences into a make image batch from an impact pack and then combine them. And so this would have been the final animation here. That's not the correct preview, though. I don't think. I think what it is, is this is from when I had it set up for two. Yeah, that's why. So what you're looking at is actually uh, just this. And then I then hooked that up, saved it, and anyway. So, after we've created our animation, obviously we got the chance to do film interpolation, upscaling, whatever else we want. So here's an example of how you might do that. And again, it's all toggleable, so I could just say, no, actually, I don't want any of that stuff. And um, it's not going to do this. But it will still do the save, okay? So, for example, if I don't care about the slow motion or the high speed, footage i can just have it only produce this but it doesn't take long to save a bunch of uh it doesn't take long to do that part it's not a memory intensive thing it's more a cpu thing um but again you know you can just control b on it to bypass if you don't want it or just delete it because it is just three save nodes really and all i've done is just set them up to have 15 30 and 60 on the frame rate which obviously you can change. Um, you can change if you use 24, you'll go 24, 48, and uh, whatever you do, whatever, what was it, 12 for the half? Yeah. So you could set it up for that if you want to do it that way. Um, right. So that is this workflow. So this is A, B, C, D, A loop. And then you just put any image you want, do your prompt, and off you go. Um, the other pack that we have, the other workflow I have is ABBA, which is your classic loop. So this is a, you know, I'm trying to give you the same features from Mimic Motion, but using this, I think it's based off the SDXL architecture, but I'm not 100%. It, the model was called Easy Animate V3, but it was also, sorry, Easy Animate V3, but it was also named um easy animation xl so i honestly i need to do more research but point is it works great um when using sd 1.5 and using all the control nets the qr monster animate diff this same process using the same input files right because i try to use the same stuff um this takes 2,000 seconds with my A, B, C, D, A, and it takes 1,000 seconds with this one. So it, you'd think, well, that's a really long time, right? And, and I guess it is. But compared to the old one, which took 40 minutes, this is actually a significant speed boost. So I can only hope things keep going in the same direction. Um, but just to quickly run through what the ABBA workflow is, it's essentially the exact same thing, okay? There's just only two images. So what we're going to do is we're going to go A, B, and then we're going to go B, A. So basically it is, you could, you might say, well, why didn't you just activate ping pong? And the reason was because I didn't want it to just, you can tell when it just reverses, okay? But what this does is it actually generates a new animation in reverse. And the thing is that if you were to batch a few of these, because it is responding to the seed, 
So if I batch, they're on increment. So they'll be, they'll be different. They'll be slightly different every time. So, you know, every time you make a new, uh, a new pair, which is, which is then joined and then goes through interpolation or any upscaling, right? What that means is that the eye will notice it's not re repeating. Okay. It's going to be new every time. It's going to be the same thing, but in a different way. And that's something that we, we, which was kind of hard to control before. So um, obviously you can reproduce the exact thing with the seed. So, you know, it is deterministic in that way. Um, but also you have the ability to make these extremely slight variations. And like I said, if you just make a loop, 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 the eye can tell when it loops. But if you make like a whole bunch of loops and then put them together in a randomized order, you can't really tell, is it the one from before or is it the one I, have I seen this one yet? And obviously you can, you can mix that up further by having two seeds, one for the AB and one for the uh, BA. And then obviously it's mismatched and it's going to add to even more variation. So it basically gives you more loops faster. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, and, and also it's not a 512, it's a 768. It's weird. It feels like 2.1 to me. I don't know why, but it just does. And when it's got like an, a, a 768 and a 960 model, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, maybe it is SDXL. But regardless, um, this is the new V2 Loop Motion or Loop Motion XL. It's running on a back end of Easy Animation V3, which is experimental. So expect this to be, well, when I say that, work in progress. I don't want to put words in Kijai's mouth, but he said work in progress. Basically, it works. However, the nodes might change. Now, if I find out they've changed, I'll come in and we'll do another pack, which will update them. But for now, the version should be live by the time you're watching this video. The links are in the description for how to install it. I hope I've explained that to you. Uh, have a great time making your, making your loops. And that's everything I got to tell you. So have a great weekend and I will see you next time.